Good morning. Let's uh, let's do some comments and talk about uh, what I'm going to do about that voice uh, of the, the Romans in the Roman Senate, that misanthrope. Uh, and we'll listen to some music by uh, the Viking guy. Hi, Drew. Ah, sunshine, uh, sunshine25801 says it's a demon, trust me. What's misanthroping? Um, a misanthrope is somebody who distrusts or hates humanity. Um, so I, I, I feel that uh, a lot of uh, the things that go on in my head involve uh, distrust. And sometimes uh, that's healthy. Um, you know, you need to be aware of your surroundings, uh, be it with people, or uh, sometimes in the woods, uh, branches break, and then they get hooked up on other branches. So there's, like, there's long, heavy poles of wood up there. And uh, if the wind's blowing, um, they might get uh, shaken loose and drop on you. Um, so, you know, there's a certain amount of uh, wonderfulness combined with distrust in dealing with people and uh, with going out hiking, so... And I, I, th I was talking about like how uh, misanthrope, uh, you know, the distrust of uh, humanity uh, could get to the point of the hate for humanity uh, if there's enough examples out there. Uh, so, if, you know, if I got a job as a policeman or, uh, you know, if I was uh, involved in the military, I think that I, I would be fast-tracked towards the hate because I'd be able to find these examples of the, the worst-case examples of human behavior. Uh, so I don't plan on, you know, either one of those options, but, uh, I think you open yourself up to being a misanthrope and you open yourself up to, uh, darker possibilities. Though a demon, you say, uh, it's a demon, trust me. I think a demon is just, uh, somebody or something that doesn't fit into the society they happen to be in at the moment. And if that demon then is moved somewhere else, somewhere else where their way of life is the average, the common then it's not a demon anymore. I think that in hell, there are no demons. Just people doing something different. Oh, uh, Partha Makofna? Partha Makofna? I'm not sure that's right. Uh, I'm not pronouncing it right. Um, says, maybe this voice doesn't need to be silenced. Maybe it just needs to be pushed back into line. Uh, I don't, you're right. I don't think the, uh, the voice should be silenced. Uh, I don't think about, I don't think I have the power to push it anywhere. Um, I think I'm, I'm powerful like the ocean, and I think that voice is powerful like a uh, cliff face. And I want uh, I want a nice beach there, and uh, so I'm going to have to just slowly erode at this uh, cliff face until I get what I want. Um, but I don't think the voice is going to go away. Uh, I have an idea of how I'm going to go about this, so I'll talk about that at the end. Uh, 40 ounce food, you left a, uh, what do you call it, a haiku. Uh, thanks. I uh, appreciate the compliment. Uh, Pulse of Sensei, you leave comments uh, that are uh, are raps and rhymes, and uh, one day I want to collect them all and uh, try to rap them. Uh, I've tried it in the past; did a terrible job. Zarkov forty five. <laughs> I love uh, Flash Gordon, Agent Zarkov. Program him to level six. Uh, but you say the voice tells you the truth. Do you want to lose touch with that reality? And I don't. Um, uh, for instance, here's the voice did something that I felt uh, was why it's so useful. Is I was uh, I overheard some people behind me uh, walking towards me as I was sitting in my car and they're walking, and uh, I had my uh, I had my hand up on my window and uh, just my uh, my middle finger could reach the top of my window sill. So that's that's how my middle finger was holding my hand up on my uh, on my window, um, and uh, I heard these people talking, and uh, my, that voice was analyzing uh, their social dynamic. Um, it was a couple boys and a couple girls, and I could tell the girls weren't getting along. And uh, one of the girls was saying, kind of like in a lighthearted manner, saying, 
we're in line to go into Burning Man. She's like, oh my gosh, it's so amazing here. And one of the girls kind of said in kind of a condescending tone, oh, well, if you think the line getting into Burning Man is amazing, it's really going to blow your mind when you actually get in. And the girl kind of like, she was like in this happy, like I'm really loving it. And then this woman like sloshed cold water on her. And uh, that's where the, the voice said, that's where you, the young woman who got the cold water sloshed on you, should have been aware of what that woman was doing to you. Um, probably responding to her uh, was pointless. She's just yanking your chain. So, uh, but the woman said, uh, I've been to Burning Man before. I know what it's like. And then she was kind of stewing a little bit. And I, even as they approached me, I, uh, I became even more aware of them. Because, you know, uh, my experience with groups of people, uh, if one of them's getting agitated, um, something might happen. Uh, and a lot of times it's directed outwards. You know, like the survival of the group depends upon their... Uh, uh, their coexistence, and sometimes their coexistence, when it becomes destabilized, um, you uh, you lash out in another direction, and that kind of coalesces the group. Everyone starts working together because, hey, you know, we've got a common problem here. So I'm like, I'm, I have my hand up like this, and she picks up on the fact that just my middle finger is stuck up on the windowsill, and the rest of my fingers are hanging free. And she says, that guy's flipping us off. It was just a way to kind of like, distract her group from that little uh, that little scene they just did. Um, and I knew it. I knew it in advance. The whole thing didn't catch me off guard. I didn't. I wasn't just sitting there just kind of spacing off and suddenly like this woman thinks I'm flipping her off and then I get flustered and say, oh, I'm sorry. I was just holding on to my windowsill. And like, then I feel like defensive and I'm wondering what that's all about. And then maybe it's like that whole, um, you know, the big monkey hits the medium-sized monkey, and the medium-sized monkey hits the little monkey. You know, that just keeps getting passed on, except it didn't get passed on because I knew what it was about. So the voice is, uh, is, is crazy useful. Um, and it picks up on stuff like that all the time. Things happening at a distance uh, that I'm aware of uh, long before they affect me. Um, and, you know, and it's not always, you know, something negative like that. Sometimes uh, I'm aware of something long before it happens, and it's uh, a wonderful thing. Uh, sometimes people say, how'd you know that was going to happen? <laughs> oh. It's Laura Layla. Slash Incorporated. You, got, you gave me a whole bunch of comments. Uh, and w combined with your name, it's a little disturbing, but, uh, but they're very good comments, thanks. Uh, and I saw one of your videos about you doing uh, some special effects with uh, like paintball guns or little uh, or air guns or whatever. I kind of wonder if one of those guys was you. Lobster Fate says hello, hello Lobster. You don't have a lot of information on that channel. I wonder if that's another one of your channels or if you're just getting here. Or what kind of tube dweller are you? Foo, good advice. Amakaiba, good advice. Lor Layla uh, says, uh, excellent comment. Hi, Lala. Um, <sighs> your whole comment's good. I'll read the whole thing. Uh, it's very easy to make assumptions about the present and the future from the past. It's generally inaccurate. Of course, there's a difference between that and not learning to make the same mistakes we've made in the past. Uh, but that relates to situations we put ourselves in and the people we find ourselves attracted to, often to prove how right we are about how wrong others are. An attentive and open attitude and acceptance that others are who they are, irrespective of what they can, of what, of what we want can help. Um, so I, I like that. That's awesome. Um, and it makes a lot of sense to me, despite how hard it was for me to read it. <laughs> Um, so here's, here's the plan. Um, if the problem's, uh, uh, misanthropy, if I have a distrust for humanity, um, and I have a really effective voice in my head, uh, that, uh, uh, doesn't work to my full advantage, um, how can I, uh, how can I deal with that? Um, so... This voice, like I mentioned earlier, is uh, um, inc 
incredibly perceptive. So it's like, say you have a tool, or say it's like a soldier in my army or something like that. It's uh, um, incredibly perceptive, except it's not giving me all the information that I want. Uh, it's perceiving uh, too much of one kind of information. And so what I think that uh, it would be best is if that voice was given extra duties. Um, so I've been trying it. Um, I, I, basically, I, I want to pay attention to and pick up on and anticipate uh, as fast as I can um, good situations. Um, like people that are going out of their way to be, uh, hey buddy, going out of their way to be uh, nice and kind and uh, make a connection. Um, pick up on, uh, you know, random acts of kindness and, uh, and I want that kind of running dialogue in my head to be, oh, look at that person over there, help that other person. Um, oh, look how this, this person, uh, figured out that the way that things were set up was a little awkward for the two of us and then, uh, they, that person did all the work to make things easier and didn't say anything about it. Um. So I want that, uh, I want that voice, um, sure to go ahead and keep telling me, you know, tell me like, you know, warnings and things like that, like, this person's being rude to you. Um, like, I want that information. Um, but then I want that information of like, this person's being very kind with you. This person wants to be friendly with you. Uh, occasionally I have people like, I'm really busy and someone wants to stop and like, like we probably, uh, had some good interactions in the past and. He's, this guy's like, uh, hey, hey, how's it going? And I'm like, fine, but I'm really busy. And I, I need that voice to say, hey, this guy's taking a moment uh, to be pleasant with you. Why don't you just t try to take a moment um, and uh, be pleasant back. Um, add one, add a pleasant moment to your day. Because uh, that's something you could uh, work towards. And uh, the negative moments will just come. So, so yeah, I want to get this, uh, this Roman senator uh, perceiving... Uh, more than just uh, um, the negatives. I want this Roman senator to then stand forth and say, uh, today many great things happened and uh, I would like to list them uh, if I have your attention. And, uh, and my attention it'll have. All right, thanks for your comments, everybody. And I'll see you in the tubes.